I just stuck with family. I had a bad ruling with Judge Stewart Scott, and I've just been out here exercising my First Amendment rights. Did you tell me that the sheriffs were sent to your home by Judge Scott? Uh, correct, yes, they were. And I actually was fortunate enough, I was able to videotape it, but he sent two Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies um, to my 88 year grandmother's house. And it was because I questioned his ruling, I went to get paid for work in court to file a judicial ethics complaint, and that's why I received that retaliation. gentleman today got right up in my face like he was going to knock me out, which is completely unacceptable. And uh, here's his supervisor right now. We have every right to be out here on the street. We're not doing anything wrong. So, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Scott Larkin, nice to meet you. And uh, here's his supervisor right now. We have every right to be out here on the street. We're not doing anything wrong. Hi, how are you? You're absolutely right. Scott, nice to meet you. Scott Larkin, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry, can you tell me your name and your badge number, please? Sergeant Tran. Sergeant? Tran. Tran, and your badge number? 2003. 3003? 2003. 2003. And do you understand that people have been complaining that they have been harassed by the... Let me talk to him, please. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just out here civilly protesting. This other gentleman was out there with me, and your deputy came out here, told him to remove his sign, get it out of the way, and he couldn't be here, and then he started getting up in my face. And I told him he had a, a space difference. When he gets right up in my face and starts yelling at me, I said, bud, you got to back up. And he says, I'm not going to back up. And he starts going off on me out in front of there. All these other people saw that out there. I'm not blocking the Sir, are you smirking while he's filing a complaint against you? Yeah. So basically what, what this judge said earlier was he the court described, so he was asked to be on the sidewalk. Oh, okay. He had every right to be there. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, and, and what he did coming up to him was he scared him to go all the way over to the corner. So I had to tell the gentleman, you have every right to be on the sidewalk, not blocking anybody. You have every right to be on the So as long as you guys are not disrupting court proceedings, you guys have every right to be on the Okay. And that's what I thought the process was. Now, why is he getting in my face? Why is he threatening me? Why is he doing that stuff? It's not advising. I'm sorry to say it's not it really isn't. It's enough to file a complaint, you know. I are, mean, are you aware that other protests occurred right over there, and those yeah, protesters protesting Judge Persky were allowed to protest on the courthouse area right over there, Sergeant? I mean, just because they're in groups like that, I mean, we might be a protest of one gentleman here and myself, but we shouldn't be treated like that. Scott. 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 You're fine. You're being sidewalk. You're doing what you are doing. You're exercising your, your right, that's fine. Just want to let you know. So I'll talk to him, you know, we'll, we'll discuss about what, ta what happened. And I appreciate you coming at it like this, but this is not how this guy acted. This is not, he came about it completely wrong, and I was scared. I was intimidated by him. He shouldn't be getting in my face about protesting out front of here. He came to me. Well, he, he just wanted to make sure people are on the, I mean, he's a nice guy. I, I've known him, I've worked with him a long time. Oh, no, I know, but you need to see how he's coming at people. And when you tell somebody there's a space point, He's all the way up in my face, and he's got a gun, he's got a baton. I mean, you shouldn't treat people like that. Well, that's why we're, we're supposed to wear our, our gear. These are, these are well, I'm just saying, you, that's harder when somebody's getting in your face when they have full gear on, and I'm not doing anything wrong. I mean, he kept following me down the road over there yelling at me. I mean, he's, he's intimidating me, and then he's egging me on to get in a confrontation with him, and I, that's what, not what I want. Hey, bud. How are you doing, bud? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Just, you know, out for exercise. I, well, I know, I think, I think, uh, my he's a good guy. That guy's an ass over there. I can't believe he got up in my face like that. No, he really did. Yeah, I said So, so you... I'll give you the copy of the order, but there's actually an order about disturbing the noise of peace. Okay? I have the four-page order. Okay. Nothing supersedes my First Amendment rights. Right. So that so, stuff was designed to intimidate people from protesting out in front of here. Excuse me, can you tell me what order you're talking you about? Um, I have it over there. I have the whole four-page order. May I get a copy down. of that? That's what I got on Friday when they came out to also intimidate me over here on the other side. So. No, we just want to make sure because people bring it to our attention. Yeah, no, That's I understand. What I understand. Sure I understand. 
Um, and if there's somebody that's complaining besides a, uh, a deputy, then, you know, I understand. And then, then if you guys have somebody that is complaining, you guys know. We don't right. so, I, I can't be offended. Uh, that's <laughs> and, I'm, and I am just ragging on Judge Scott when I'm in this courtroom. But, and, so, I mean, and you guys have been really good to me. I'm sorry to say he's an ass. And that's just, it's just you know, maybe you guys came off the wrong. The long, the long foot, but I know if you know, she's a great guy. It can be intimidating a little bit, you know, guys in uniform coming out and telling them, you know, we're trying to just make sure that everybody is, is operating within the legal rights and that nobody's being Yeah, that's, 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 that's what it is. For me, I'm uh, particularly where there are those where there are differences of opinion uh, until our meeting on November 9th. Mr. Largent, thank you for your patience on that. You do have three minutes and uh, then we're going to proceed as I indicated. Welcome. Great, great. Thank you, Supervisor. When the, you know, coming into these meetings when the kind of heat really started picking up with the uh, criticism of the Sheriff's Department, um, myself and also Victoria started running into a, uh, it was almost pretty much every FGOC meeting or supervisor meeting a new list of rules would um, basically they were printed out I was either handed them out in the hallway um, or victorious was and each meeting things started to change of course on the agenda we were unable to criticize the county executives report because that was basically taken off the um, the ability it was put on to I believe the consent calendar was the comment point or open comment um, the same thing happened with the county council's report. So the public wanting to criticize, um, you know, these two entities of the county was, was just not going to happen. And every time you get kind of confused when you get a whole new printout of rules. Um, the same thing's now happening at our courthouse downtown. Um, Joe, I have provided two copies of the rules that they hand to the public um, out in the parking lot. Um, they're very interesting because when you start looking over these, um, there's different things about being 25 feet away from the building, um, not allowed to go up to people that are waiting in line at a courthouse, um, things about not communicating with court staff, and, and you know things about megaphones and, and cowbells and all these interesting things. And it's very misleading to the public because none of this stuff supersedes my constitutional rights. And yet I get this thrown in my face. This is signed by our presiding judge, you know, that's on our Justice and Public Safety panel. This was the same type of what I consider intimidation and harassment. And a lot of that, when these rules started to change, were coming out of our county council's office and also our county executive's office. Um, these are very misleading to the public. And when we're coming in here to speak up about the problems and the inhumane conditions of our jail, um, no one should be intimidated. Nobody should be harassed. And I keep saying this, and you guys know I've really been pushing this lately, what happened to Victorious Alexander was unacceptable, and the public is not happy about this now. Now, you guys produce your narrative of what happened in here. The transcripts don't lie. And when sheriff's deputies are stating that they did a double arm takedown in that hallway, what you guys got to see was somebody that was supposedly disrupting the meeting. When they put the pain compliance on, of course he started to yell and scream. When they got him out that door, they decided to open that door with his head and then proceeded to slam his head into the ground. Um, that's not acceptable. And this is the stuff that they hide in the Santa Clara County Jail. It's things like that. It's using people's heads to open up doors. It's double arm barring them into the ground. And nobody should have to go through that. And I'm very ashamed that this county actually witnessed this harassment and sat back and did nothing about it. So we're still standing up for our humanity. And uh, this court case is going to be quite interesting. So thank you. Before you step away, sir, um, as you know, uh, we are precluded from engaging substantively on items that are raised during public comment because those items are not agendized and therefore pursuant to the Brown Act, we can neither take formal action nor can we uh, engage in what I'll call decision making on the fly. That being said, I'm going to ask the clerk to reproduce the document, to share it with county council, and I'm going to ask county council to um, meet with me uh, after the meeting. Uh, that could be today, that could be at some other time, to discuss the contents of the document. Okay? 
Thank you, Mr. Largent. Very much appreciated, Joe. Thank you. Our the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know.